Our game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. 62 degrees. We've got uh, winds at 18 miles per hour. 60% humidity and it is clear. Matt Kane waiting to take the field. The umpires are out. Both teams exchanging their lineup cards. Benji Molina is inching towards home plate. This broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving abroad and on ships at sea. They are watching around the world, and we welcome you and we thank you. Vote Pablo. Pablo S Sandoval is on the bubble, folks. SFGiants.com. Vote Pablo. Vote as many times as you want. Or you can go to MLB.com. Either place, very easy to do it. And you can vote as many times as you want. He's one of five nominees for the final National League All Star slot. There'll be 33 All Stars that stand on the baselines being introduced on next Tuesday's or a week from tomorrow's classic in St. Louis. And we would love to have Pablo Sandoval be one of those guys. Let's take a look at the lineup, starting lineup for the Marlins, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Coglin Bonifacio and then Dan Ugla. Ugly lifetime against the Giants. He's got good numbers, including those numbers, five home runs. Cantu, Hermida, then the center fielder Cody Ross, John Baker, a local kid catching Wes Helms, and Sean West. All right, defensively for the Giants, they'll set it up with Torres, Rowan, and Sherholtz. They'll patrol the outfield. Renteria Sandoval on the left side of the infield. Uribe Ishikawa on the right side. And Benjamin Molina, well, he'll be in the squad, putting down the fingers and doing the catching for all star right hander Matt Kane. Matt Kane, 9 and 2 through 16 starts this year, and an excellent ERA of 2.48, 88 strikeouts against 44 walks, a perfect 2 to 1 strikeout walk ratio, and just 90 hits allowed in those 108 innings. And what you're going to see from Matt Kane is a consistent fastball that'll go 92 96, a big curveball. He still strikes with that pitch early in the count, a changeup he'll throw at any time, and a slider, and a whole ton of confidence. Time to look at our Firestone leaderboard, the 2009 All-Star Game starting pitcher candidates. Well, Matt Kane and Tim Linscombe are two candidates for that strong, strong honor. As is Josh Johnson, the gentleman who will be on the hill tomorrow night for the Florida Marlins. So three All-Stars in this series, two for the Giants, Kane and Linscombe, Johnson for the Marlins. And Danny Heron has the best ERA of that bunch. So we will find out sometime in the next couple of days who will start the ball game. We do know who's going to start this game. It's going to be Matt Kane to face Chris Coglin. Vote Pablo. And vote a lot. Here's the first pitch of the ball game is Kane. Deals and it is a call strike. 7-15 first pitch. Coglin skies it into right center field. Sherholtz moving over into the sunlight, and Sherholtz will make the catch. That probably was not as easy as you would think. Not a lot of sun left on the field, but out there in Triples Alley, there's still a, a bunch. And if you're going back at a ball and you're looking back into the sun, it can be a bit problematic, but not so for someone who I guess you'd have to say is used to it. Here's Bonifacio playing at shortstop. Usually plays third for these Marlins only because Hanley Ramirez plays short and he is not in the lineup tonight. The 0 1 pitch is swing and a miss, nothing in two. Dan Ayasagna is behind the dish. Relaford, Vanover, and Holbrook from first to third. 0 and 2 to Bonifacio. And that fastball is high. Little reach back velocity there with two strikes, and you'll see Kane do that. He and Linscombe, they can max out in the, in the mid to high 90s if they want to on every pitch, but they'll cruise at 92-94, and then they get to two strikes. They will hump up 
That last one at 96 for Kane. Such a nice ability to have the ability to reach back and and add a couple of feet on a fastball late in the counts. Off his fist stays one and two. The Marlins have won two straight. They've won five of six. They really took advantage of the two series one against the Nationals one against the Pirates. Six games total in those two series and that's where they won the five of six. The one two to Bonifacio out of play it stays one and two. This is a battle right here. The seventh pitch coming. Three straight foul balls off the bat of Bonifacio. That's a good take. It's two and two. Good pitch, good take. Kevin Franson is here with Randy Johnson going on the disabled list. Got him. In the end, it was a high fastball right across the letters. Matt Cain says the day he got here had the ability to throw the high fastball by a big league hitter. And that really was a little below the letters. And that's not an easy, easy pitch to get past a big league hitter. Here's Ugla who looks at a strike. Go back to how the Marlins are playing. They've also won 10 of their last 14. Ugla acted like he did not see that pitch very well. There is a little bit of a of a background issue with the sun splashed background and that may have been a problem it may not have. But if I'm Dan Ugla, I say it is a problem. And he didn't have a problem on that swing, and it stays 0-2. Yeah, he got a little lazy with that breaking ball, or it may have been just a cut fastball, but had a little movement running away from from Ugla. But still, you're ahead to count 0-2, and you you drop one at this point in the. That was a fastball, and that was a hanging fastball, belt high. That was hittable. And Ugla gets hit on the left arm. So Ugla down to first, and here's Cantu. Jorge Cantu hitting 283. He is one for six in his career against Matt Kane. Just underway here in San Francisco. And the first pitch to Cantu is low and away. So Kane out of the stretch for the first time. Quick toss to first, Ugla with one steal. He is not a threat. Kane deals the 1 0 pitch. Swinging a high pop up right around the pitcher's mound. Who's it going to be? It's going to be vote for Pablo, and that ends the inning. It's going to be the theme. I, I'll apologize ahead of time. Giants coming up. Vote for Pablo.
to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Rowan. Torres gets a start, then Sandoval. Vote for Pablo. Benji Molina, the cleanup hitter. Then it's Renteria, followed by Scherholz, Arive, Ishikawa, and Kane. Sean West, the big lefty, and I mean big, 6'8, 240, 23 year older, out of Houston, Texas. Lives in Shreveport, Louisiana now. Fastball slider changeup pitcher. On the ground, foul down the third baseline. The fastball we saw from West in Florida was 91-95, eh, more 91s than 95. With a real good changeup, and that was the difference in that game. As we mentioned, eight strong innings with just two hits allowed, no runs allowed against the Giants. Here's what he's done on the year. Strikeouts about a one-to-one -one ratio, 26 to 21. 26 strikeouts against 21 walks. And he will throw ground balls. Not really a strikeout guy, more of a pitch to contact and just try and take your balance out of your at bat. And that's why the changeup is so important with him. It's a bit temperamental. If it's working, he can be nasty. If it's not, he can be had. Rowan strikes out to lead off the ball game for the Giants. Defensively, the Marlins will set it up with Coglin, Ross, and Hermida. That's your outfield. And Bonifacio and Helms will be on the left side of the infield. Hanley Ramirez with a slight injury, not in there tonight. It's short. Ugla and Cantu on the right side of the infield. And John Baker will do the catching for the Marlins tonight. Torres pushes a, a bunt that almost went into the cold. <laughs> it could happen. Marlins rank 14th in the National League defensively. They have made 60 errors as a group. The Giants have made 41, and they rank 6th in the National League. Breaking ball for a strike and a quick 0-2 to Andres Torres. 267 average. He was in the game when West beat the Giants in Florida. And he went 0 for 2, and West is on his way to striking out a lot of people tonight. Well, he's throwing six pitches and he's got two strikeouts. And I just got to tell you, he's not really a strikeout guy. He's more of a pitch to contact guy. But against the Giants, he does not really believe that. Near Sandoval hitting 333. 12 home runs, 44 driven in. Vote for Pablo. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Seven pitches, seven strikes. Into right center field. Is this going to hang up? It will as Ross runs it down. After one inning, it's nothing, nothing here at AT&T Park.
A lot here at at and Park. You got 20 carnival rides, midway games, and you got a whole lot more. This is what you do. It's a $25 combo ticket. Go to sfgiants.com slash fair, and you can be a part of it. Yeah, that is a good place for a county fair, isn't it? Here's Hermita who takes a pitch high, a breaking ball. One ball and no strikes. Hermita 256, eight home runs, 30 driven in. At the knees. He's got a home run against Matt Kane. He's three for 11. On the ground, Ishikawa. Well, underhanded to King covering. One out. Yeah, that's a tip for young players. If you're a first baseman, you catch a ball and you have to make the throw to your your pitcher. Do it underhanded. The reason for it's very simple. When you underhand a ball, the ball will go up and it's likely to, that he'll receive it above the belt. When you throw it overhand, the ball will go down. And it's, it's a throw that if you throw it overhand, oftentimes goes below the belt. And that's a much tougher play. Underhand. Ball goes high, high is better. Yeah, plus you see it better. Yeah, you can see it early. Here's Cody Ross. Fouls it back. Ross always has the, that home run cut. Oh, he gets up there and he tries to hit it off the center field scoreboard. Well, he's got 14 home runs. He's got 48 driven in. And for a guy who's you know not a big guy, very strong and compact in stature. And he lets it fly and he gets extension. Just misses with the breaking ball. It's a ball and a strike. Well, that one kind of hung up there. It's two balls and a strike to Cody Ross. 0 for 3 lifetime against Matt Kane. Cody Ross, 5'10, 195 pounder. Hammers it to left. Torres spins around. Torres is going to watch this one. No, it's a ground rule double. A ground rule double. Cody Ross doesn't know it yet, but he's going to go back to second. That call was made immediately by the second base umpire. And that was Larry Vanover. Well, Vanover goes out there, watch the fan lean over and clearly interfere with the play. And he's gone. That guy is going to be ushered out of the ballpark. And the rule is just do not interfere, folks. Because it's a, it's a clear cut rule they have here at the ballpark. You interfere, you're gone. Swing a line drive foul off the bat of John Baker. I mean, it's a tough way to go. I, I mean, I, in, in a little bit of a way, I feel sorry for the guy. It's the second inning. Yeah. But you can't do it. I know that guy. He's a good fan. But he just got a little uh, excited. Made a great play. Interfered. You got to go. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Well, I applaud Larry Vanover. I mean, that that call with some guys, it might not get called. You can't assume that they're going to say ground rule double. Well, clearly, clearly he had a great look at it. As that fastball is high, and also Freddie Gonzalez saw it well too. Freddy Gonzalez, a skipper for the Marlins, saw it, did not come out and argue it. And I think it was because it was called so quickly. Baker out swinging. Two out, second strikeout for Kane. That's really one of those if you're Kane, you're standing on the mound saying, stay in here, stay in here. Well, every time you you throw a home run, you say stay in here, <laughs> even if it, even if it goes in the parking lot or in the pond. Fan gets there, reaches in. 
I mean, if I'm Freddie Gonzalez, I at least have to have it reviewed. I got to go out there and argue just to stay in shape. Yeah, if you need practice at it, why not? Helms is not going to get a chance to play. Well, Sean West doesn't have a batting average. He's had 11 at bats and he struck out nine times. So Bruce Bochy is going to play that trump card and have Kane face West. Well, he becomes Babe Ruth now, though. Oh, you've got to pitch him like he can hit. Absolutely, you do. If they have a bat in their hand, they're dangerous. Here's West. 0 for 11 on the season. Swing and a miss. I mean, you look at the swing, you think, now this guy's got a little ability. Then you look at the numbers, and there are no numbers. 0 for 11, nine strikeouts. Those are the numbers. Feeding them curveballs. And as big and as strong as West is, I mean, he could run into one and really hurt you. Curveballs. Got him on three pitches to end the inning. Benji Molina will lead things off. Welcome back to Giants Baseball. Have you gotten the message? You need to vote for Pablo. Go to sfgiants.com. And while you're there on the computer, go visit csnbayarea.com and vote on our poll question. Here it is for tonight. You make the call. Do you think the Giants will trade for a well-known position player? Is it yes or no? And then go back to sfgiants.com and vote for Pablo and find out the results tonight on Giants Post Game Live. Guys. All right, thanks, Amy. Lots of good information, and here's Benji Molina. Molina went 0 for 3 against West about three weeks ago. And he takes the first pitch inside. One ball and no strikes. Hammers one into the alleyway. And Benji is going to hustle. Coglin lets Ross pick it up, and Molina with a leadoff double. Edgar Renteria. Little fastball that hangs up there at the waist out over the plate. And Big Money gets extended, finds a gap in left center. And when he's hot, he usually pummels those gaps. 
Here's Renteria. 267 for Edgar Renteria. And he takes a fastball inside, 1 0. We talked to Benji before the game and we told him, he said, hey, we think you should be on the All Star team. He goes, thank you. My brother said so too. Well, that's a good brother. His brother Yadier is going to start for the National League outside 2 0. Quite a family of catchers. That's an amazing story. All three Molina brothers in the big leagues. Down the right field line and out of play, and the dad of all three of those boys passed away in October of last year. You know, Benji carries a picture of his dad on, all over the on the road. You see it in his locker. Yeah, it's not a wallet sized picture. It, no. It's a big book. You see the RBI leaders for catchers. There's a bunt. Can Helms throw him out? He does. Well, they're going to give Renteria a sacrifice bunt. And now Nate Sherholtz has a chance to knock in Benji Molina. Hey, if you watch the technique of Renteria, he, he bunts better than anybody on the team. He shows late, he's got nice touch, he deadens the ball out there towards the end of the bat. Infield is halfway with Benji Molina at third. As Nate Sherholtz takes that first pitch for a strike. There's the technique Mike's talking about. He, he would like to have deadened it a little bit more. Oh and two. But you know he does a lot of things right. I mean the first and foremost is he gets the barrel head out there after he shows late. Now that showing late is, is paramount. Foul look out. But it, it, he really gets the bat head out and you have to be able to get the bat head out there to see the ball make contact. Look at the back foot. The back foot drops back and really puts it in a position to push off the back foot and get good drive towards the first baseline. And as you point out just a bit hard. Kevin Heagle is perfect. Cody Ross is coming in. He dives. He makes the catch. And because he had to dive, Benji Molina is going to score. Otherwise, I doubt Benji Molina would have been able to score. No, I agree. If he catches that ball on his feet, Molina could not advance. That turns to be a pretty good at bat from Sherholtz. Nice play from Cody Ross to catch the ball, period. But when he lost his feet, that was the opportunity that Benji Molina needed to score from third. Molina does not have speed. Here's Juan Arribe. So the Giants cash in on the leadoff double. It's good baseball. Look out. Two balls and no strikes. Giants have a run against Sean West. They couldn't do that in eight innings when they faced him in Florida. Mike said earlier, six foot eight, two forty. But we stood next to him. He looked at least six eleven. At least, either he's lying about six eight, or we're shrinking. Plus, he had he had shoulders that just kept on going, and he just turned twenty three. He's going to get bigger. This was the start he had in Florida against the Giants, where he shut them down completely. It was his first major league victory and uh, everything was working. The Giants were very aggressive and and really went out of the strike zone a lot against him. But uh, the big slurve that change up and the fastball all clicking that night for him. Just two hits allowed. Six strikeouts just three base runners in those eight innings. Impressive. Ishikawa looks at a strike. It's a really nice easy motion. I guess if you're a really tall pitcher, that's what you have to have. 
Well, it helps to be in sync with your lower body. I mean, that's, that's at times for a tall pitcher can be difficult. The bad part about it is when you are trying to allow yourself to be in sync, upper body, lower body, for a big guy, it takes time to get unwound. Yeah. And as a base stealer, you can really get a good jump. Low to Ishikawa. I mean, that was 1.68 from the time he started his motion from the time the ball made contact with the glove. And that's one of the slowest release times we've seen all year. Helms charges. And they get Ishikawa by a step, and that'll do it. Giants pick up a run. We will head to the third. One nothing. San Francisco. Bucks for the special event ticket, and uh, you get to eat. That's what you do at a crab feed, and uh, you get a limited edition Crazy Crab Collectors T-shirt. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. 415-972-2298, or you can always go online to sfgiants.com/special-events. Crab feed. So we got the county fair and the crab feed. Perfect. I'm in. Leadoff hitter Chris Coglin takes a pitch inside. One and zero. People who eat crab that really love the whole process. Yeah. They like actually digging it out of the crab legs. Really? Me, I want to hire somebody to do it. Uh huh. So and you I, can eat the crab meat like Doritos? Yeah. And, I mean, I think, you know, that's why you have kids for them. To, uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> Two and one to Coglin. Three balls and a strike. Change up with big movement running away from the left hand hitter. This little guy's happy. He's got the purple cotton candy. Were you a cotton candy fan? Hate it. Out of play, three and two. Yeah, I could never see it. I could I couldn't get the whole cotton candy thing. My sister, oh my lord, did she like cotton candy? There it is, crazy crabs. That's as good as it gets, folks. It's not cheap, but it's good. Down the right field line, foul. These guys were ready. We're going to be out there tomorrow night doing the ball game. And we're going to be ready. Right there. Yeah, I'm pumped up about that. I am too. Got him. See ya.
Nice comeback, 3-1 to get the strikeout. I mean, that's a leadoff hitter with good speed. You're sending back to the dugout. And he does it with just a challenge fastball. And the confidence behind Matt Cain's fastball is just fantastic. He has been off the charts with that pitch. He's been able to spot it to both sides of the plate. He'll go up with it. And here, just a flat-out country hardball challenge. And he wins. Strikeout number four. Here's Bonifacio. Bunts it, third base side. Vote for Pablo. Not in time. Ooh, I don't know about that one. Ishikawa dug it out very nicely. It'll be a bunt single. Bonifacio, one of the fastest guys in the league. He is going to put some pressure on you. Little trouble getting the ball out of the glove for Pablo. He was they out. Got him. He was out. Charlie Relaford, the first base umpire, may not have got this one correct. Nice play from Ishikawa to go to the high backhander. He's out. Yep. Here's Dan Ugla. Ugla. I'm going to say just miss this one. It might lift carry out of here anyway. And now tagging is Bonifacio. And they got him. It all works out in the end. Yep. And it's a double play. Eleven, and you could also wake up with traffic and weather on NBC Bay Area weekday morning, starting at 4:30 a.m. All right, check out the two box. We love the two box. All right, this ball kept going and going. Bonifacio actually decided a little late to tag, and you can see Torres had already caught it before he got to the bag, and then the tag by a rebate. He has no idea where. Bonifacio is so all you do is you lay the ball down in front of the bag and then the runner slides right into you. I think Torres is a bit surprised that Bonifacio was going to advance. I was a bit surprised that the ball carried that much. Center field. Hit well. Ross at the wall and he makes the catch. And Matt Cain nearly had his first of the year. Well, as big as strong as Matt Cain is, he can definitely pump it out of here to center field. And I think that got off the sweet spot just a little bit towards the end of the bat. Otherwise, he'd have had a round triple. Here's Aaron Rowan. Rowan struck out in the first inning.
Rowan sharply on the ground to Bonifacio. And that's two outs. And here's Andres Torres. Hanley Ramirez, the all star shortstop for the Marlins, not in the lineup tonight with a little injury to his hip. And they're not even sure if he's going to be able to play tomorrow. There's Ramirez. And he is as good as there is, folks. That is a huge blow to their offense when he's not able to suit up. Here's Torres, who struck out in the first inning. He clearly one of the top five best players in the National League. Get into center field, Ross back. Ross still back. Ross watches this one off the bottom of the wall, and Torres is on the move. And he will get into third with a headlong slide, and that's a triple. <laughs> it doesn't take much. This guy gets any opening in the outfield, and he has a chance to run. He can throw you. Ball hits off the wall. Nice play, really, there. Ross stopping the ball, but that's the break that he was looking for. No hesitation. Just straight on through. Well, here's Pablo Sandoval. I had him at 13 4 from home to third. Wow. Send the ball, hit a fly ball to center field in the first. Here he pops this one up. Shallow right field. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Ugla? And it is Ugla. And that'll end the inning. No runs, a triple one left. We'll go to the fourth. One nothing, Giants. All-star team that's David Wright and Ryan Zimmerman will just compare Sandoval's numbers with those two and when you do that comparison say oh my goodness I have to go to sfgiants.com and vote for this guy or MLB.com and vote for this guy here's Cantu just outside one ball and no strikes and two popped out to Sandoval in the first inning. He's got very good power. Hermita and then Ross. This is the fourth inning. Very close, three and zero. I think Kane wanted it. And he pours in a strike. 
Cantu will not take that one this time around. He will not. That came. There's a Germantown, Tennessee. The offseason. Popped up. It'll be Sherholtz ball, I believe. And it'll be Sherholtz running off a rebate, and that's the right play. Well, as Cantu heads back to the Marlins bench, what do you say? We ask the AFLAC trivia question for today. The question. Florida's Hanley Ramirez is the 2009 National League All-Star starter at shortstop. Named the last giant to start at shortstop in the All-Star game. That's a good question. Here's Hermita who takes a ball, one ball and no strike. The reason I bring that up about Germantown, Tennessee is that in the offseason he hunts. And if you watch his setup before he starts, he'll always look in to get the sign and then scope goes up, boom, with his glove, and he looks right over his glove at his target, and that gains his focus. He's always had that compact motion. Rowan looks like he's going to track this down, and he will. Well, indeed he has. And a guy his size, 6'3", 245, and again, he's still 24 years old. He's going to get broader, and he's going to get bigger. He does have a compact motion. He's a high three-quarter short arm delivery. And it's a very easy stroke to repeat. And that's what has allowed him to gain the master of his the mastery of his fastball and change of combination. Oh, that took off on him. Where was that? One ball and no strikes. There's the scope, goes up, checks the sights, eyes on target. Ross down the left field line foul. Ross has had the best swings against Kane in this game. He doubled in the second. Remember it was the ball that the fan grabbed. And they escorted him out of the yard. Second inning, he's gone. Well, he's had two real good pitches to hit. I mean, both pitches have been up out of the plate. You can see the grimace. The fan comes in and makes a great play, but yo, dude, you interfered. You're gonna have to leave the ballpark. And that guy is a good fan. I mean, I met him the other night, and he's very excited about his Giants. And I'm sure he feels sick about it. But it's a big league hang with him. Well, you, from the Giants' standpoint, there's the foul ball. You have to have a rule. You have to have a rule. Well, they back it up. And people who watch the ball games, they know. Three and one to Ross. I mean, they announce it before the game. They let everybody know here around along the sides and all the ushers and usherettes. They will pass that along as people are sitting there. Out of play, it's three and two. Hey, the Harbor Queen's coming in. Really? Yep. With the head of steam. Haven't seen the Harbor Queen for a while. There, there she, she is. The red white fleet. She is decked out. Payoff pitch to Cody Ross is driven to right. That's going to be extra bases. Sure, Holtz gets to it. Maybe not. Here's the throw. Got him. Unbelievable. Nate Sure Holtz nails Cody Ross. This is defense at its best, folks. Strike three. Grab some pine.
Uribe is going to take off his hat. Juan Uribe shaved a mohawk in his head, in his hair, because Benji Molina did it. I talked to Benji today who said his brother Yadier had done it when they were in St. Louis and said, bro, you got to do this. This is the coolest new thing, a mohawk. I lived through the first mohawk phase. Then I spoke to Jonathan Sanchez who said he would shave a mohawk in his head if Merkin did it. Now that Merkin has shaved the whole thing, Jonathan Sanchez is begging off. So, Dwayne and Mike, I told him, if you guys shaved mohawks in your head, would he do it? And he said he would. No pressure. Well, Amy, you said you went through that phase, and I can't imagine it looked really good on you. If Amy does it, I'm doing it. Absolutely. Amy, I don't have a response for you. You said you lived through it. So. I did. I did. I mean, I look at Juan Uribe and he reminds me of Mr. T. Well, how, how do you did not you, see how that? How did yours look? Well, I, I try and always have a good hair day, you guys. That's my goal. There's a shot to left. It's right at Hoglin. Well, Amy's got kids. She can do anything she wants with. I mean, kids will think that's great. Look at mom. <laughs> I cannot imagine Amy the gamer with a mohawk. I'm sorry. Now, why your rebate pulls it off? Yeah. I mean, I said it on radio. I'll repeat it. We can't show him because he's not here. But the only hair that looks worse than that is Tito Fuentes. This is pop down the right field line. It'll be ugly again. Who makes the catch? Well, I pity the fool that thinks that's funny. <laughs> All right, we're going to ask and answer our athletic trivia question. And the uh, question tonight is, Florida's Hanley Ramirez is the 2009 National League All-Star. All-Star starter at shortstop. In the last giant to start at short for the All-Star game. Our survey said, well, Richard Rillia did it in 2001. That's right. 37 home runs that year for Richard Rillia. Yeah, that game really not made famous because Bonds and... Kent and Aurelia all started. It was made famous because Tommy Lasorda got knocked over. Coach in third. That's what made that game famous. Sure holds takes low. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Although it was fun watching the three lads in Giants uniform. 2 0 pitch to Sure holds, swinging a foul. Nate Sure holds with an all star play, fielding the one hop. With the bare hands, standing straight up and rifling a seed. And Cody Ross with good speed cannot believe that he is out. Soft line drive to Helms to end the inning. We will head to the fifth. It stays 1 0 Higante.
Well, a lot of it has to do with run support. Here's John Baker. Well, Mike kicks it around. It's one ball and no strikes. I think about 2007, he was 7 and 16. His ERA was 3.65, and they got 3.5 runs a game for him. That was second worst in the National League. And then the last year, Kane was 8 and 14. Again, a very fine 3.76 ERA. And they got him a little over three runs a game. That was last in the National League. And this year, they've got him 5.22, and that is 13th best. And of course, his ERA at 2.48. Line drive right at Oribe, one out. He really has been the same pitcher. Now he has polished up that changeup, and it's a much more reliable pitch, and he's not afraid to throw it at 3 0, 3 1, 3 2. I mean, he really has confidence in that pitch. And I think that has had a lot to do with his success this year, but boy, he has got good run support, and more importantly, he's made those runs stand up. Hey, that looks like Jennifer and Wes Kruko. That is. Walking uh, our dog, Bella. Bella, don't be dropping a growler right now on TV. I don't know. She's she's got the look. Center field. Rowan back. Rowan settles. Rowan catches. Can we go back to find out if anything's going on? Easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> That's my youngest son, Wes. I would give Bella all the treats she wants if she would do that right now. No, she's a she's a lady. She would not do that. There's a beautiful dog, I might add. She's a good pup. She's a be beautiful woman too. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not say a bad word about that dog in front of my wife. And of all your kids, that's my favorite Kruko kid. <laughs> that's Wes. He's my man. Yeah, he's, he's taking care of her. He's trying to get brownie points right now. He needs some cash. Yeah, he does, Mom. I need some glue. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that paw on my wife's shoulders many times. <laughs> you know what? Moms don't get. Give it up quite as easy as the dads. <laughs> That's true. We give it out without them having to ask. <laughs> it's it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a great shot. We have a lot in common, partner. Two and one to to Sean West. Two and two. And that will do it. Five strikeouts for Kane. Giants will come up. Easy, Bella. All right, Giants lead 1 0. Let's check out our Chevron unsurpassed performance. 1986, my partner made the All Star team. It was at the Astrodome. But the best part is coming up. Who's helping him? It's Jarek. Yep. There's Mr. Bush, the president. And my partner came in 
and he was outstanding. He could have threw a no hitter that night. And Jarek on his left is here tonight. And he hasn't changed a lick. His Aribe takes high. You know, it was, you know, and, and they still do this. You, you get two first class seats to the All Star game. Down the right field line, that's a fair ball. Aribe with a quick turn. And he's got a double. Nice opposite field approach. But I said he hadn't changed. There he is on the left, Jerry Kruko with his brother Chase in the orange jacket. The little guy has grown up. Yeah, he did. They gave you two first class tickets, and my wife couldn't go. There was something going on with one of the kids. And uh, so Jerry, who was seven, he and I went. He was my date. And uh, we showed up and we had a ball. Didn't shake him, did you? No, <laughs> oh, didn't want to. <laughs> Tony Pena made the team that year and he brought his son. Same deal. And uh, so the two of them were the same age. And uh, that might have been him right behind Jared. That, that's him. There's Tony Pena Jr., who now is a big leaguer. Was that in the kitchen at the Astrodome? That was in the kitchen. They had, they had us all over the place. They were trying to sign those balls. It was amazing. It took two hours to sign everything. Here's Ishikawa. Ishikawa bounced out to third. Great memories. And Matt Kane is going to find out what it's all about come next Sunday when he and Tim Linska will leave San Francisco to go. On the ground is second. This will move. A rebate a third, and now it's up to Kane to get him in. Pitcher, number 18, Matt Kane. Matt Kane hit a fly ball to the wall in straightaway center field. He would take that right here. Infield is in. So you can really help yourself out as a, as a pitcher with the bat. Low and away, 1 and 0. Oh. Not sure Bruce Boshi would think about squeezing with Matt Kane just because he is such a good hitter. Well, I would be really surprised if the squeeze was on. He is, however, a very good butter. Two balls and no strikes. And if you are going to ever put the squeeze on, now's the time to do it. If you would. From Matt Kane's perspective, if you're going to, if the squeeze is on, you would think about the right side of the infield. Three and zero. Oh. Getting timed in the out deck circle. And a late call strike three and one. The umpires over by the dugout. They're not happy with that call. But 12,000 over, over there. Three and one to Kane. And the walk. Good at bat. I and mean, that's not an easy thing for a pitcher to do simply because they don't string enough bats together to really get a clear cut defined strike zone. And oftentimes in this situation, when you have a runner at third base, less than two outs, guys will go out of the strike zone to try and basically make something out of nothing. But a nice patient at bat there from Matt Kane. And that's going to bring out Mark Wiley, the pitching coach for the Marlins. Remember he's got a 23 year old kid out there West. He doesn't have a lot of experience and I think more than anything else, he's going to calm him down. West is a, is a pitcher that can get ground balls and I think that may be the message that Wiley is going to carry out there kid. This is not a strikeout situation. Let's try and get the ground ball. Well he got the ground ball in the third inning. West struck out Rowan in the first. He got a sharp ground ball to Bonifacio in the third.
So an opportunity for Aaron Rowan to knock in Oribe, who's at third. Way outside, one ball and no strikes. He almost threw that ball right by John Baker. You know where John Baker lives? No. Danville. Really? California. Is he one of your neighbors? Yep. John and I are tight. One ball and no strikes. There's a strike. That's a good pitch to hit only if you're looking for it. Yeah, 1-0, oh, you're looking fastball. I mean, most guys will. Especially with a the guy they don't have a lot of experience with, like West. Still a puppy. Ooh, very close. West wanted it two and one. Rebay at third, Kane at first. Three and one. Some pretty good takes here from Aaron Rowan. I mean, it tells you one thing he's looking middle away. If a guy's shaving that inside corner, this is an RBI situation with a runner at third. I mean, you're going to expand your zone, you're going to look for something up. And here he's looking for something out over the plate. And both times on the inside corner, he's spin on pitches that some umpires would call strikes. And the walk. And now they're loaded for Andres Torres. Torres had a booming triple in the third. Well, indeed, Ben. If you're a guy who's. Hit a triple like he did the second at bat, seeing it pretty well. West to Torres. Swing and a foul to the backstop, 0 and 1. Well, he was looking for it. You're looking for something up, you're looking for something hard, and he got both and just missed it. You gotta grind it out. Now you just have to make the adjustment at the batter's box, get short. I mean, you got speed, you hit the ball on the ground, you may be able to beat a double play out. You gotta grind it out. Look out, a snifter one and two. Popped him up. Shallow right field. It's Hermida. Oribe is going to challenge. He'll read the throw. It's a bit offline, but it wouldn't have mattered. As short as that ball was hit, Cantu would have been able to cut off and throw the ball home. So now it's up to Panda. Now the one job you have, if you're the base. Runner at third is you have to try and draw a throw. You've got to fake like you're coming down that line with the idea that if you make him make a hard throw, he just might throw it away. Check out that step. Pablo Sandoval hit 400 with two outs. Not two, not 395, not 397, 400. And that's the spot he's in right now with the bases loaded. Very high, 1 and 0. Oh. A rebate, Kane Rowan. Grand 
slam for Sandoval. And it's 5 nothing. They love this kid. And they should love this kid. And they should vote for this kid. First career Grand Slam. And they want a curtain call. I'm voting for him. Again and again and again and again. <laughs> yes, sir. Molina takes outside. Jamalina golfs one out of play. That was a no doubt about it. That's one of the farthest we've seen hit up there this year. That was deep in the bleachers. And you talk about lighting up a crowd. Oh, oh my. Well, he's raised his average with two outs. He's hit 400 and uh, it just got higher. Benjamin Molina on the ground is second where Ugla has it and that will end the inning but the grand slam by Pablo Sandoval he knew he had it it's bye bye baby five nothing Giants. Courtesy of Pablo Sandoval, we're going to make it our fourth quality drive of the game. With this swing of the bat, Sandoval unloads uh, home run number 13, and uh, it stretches his RBI total up to 48 now. And that was a big potato. You talk about lighting the fans up, watch the crowd. Oh, yeah, they're going to go right home, and they're going to vote for this guy. He needs to go to the All-Star game. And Aaron Rowland sent him out there for his curtain call. Our fourth quality drive of the game. Here's Coglin. Well, if you have a laptop, you can sit on the couch while you're watching the game and you can vote through the whole game. Just a suggestion. Yeah, you can do it. Foul back. It's one ball and two strikes. These guys came prepared. Although the Pablo part came a little bit too low in the sweatshirt. That's true. I get to rewrite that in there. <laughs> Sharply foul. 
one more time. First career grand slam for Sandoval. And that thing stayed hit for a while. Now the best part about that kid is every day you get to the yard, he is happy to be there. Renteria up his arm, and Coglin will be aboard. Well, tonight at 10:30 at Sportsnet Central, Matt Morrison and Jamie Sire, they will be the host tonight. You got the A's and Red Sox highlights, and by the way, they're good highlights for the A's. Highlights of this ball game, and the uh, Sharks resign Ryan Close. In air on Renteria, you can see that ball skip a little bit on Renteria. Bonifacio out of play. Seventh air on the year for Renteria. He hasn't made many. Look at that. No air from that guy. Oh yeah, make your mom and dad proud. Meet at a bit. That's my boy. Diving back in is Coglin. That's why you bring your glove. To Bonifacio. Base hit to right field, so the Marlins making some noise. Sherholtz will get it back into Ishikawa. Second and third with nobody out. Well, lots and lots of speed on the base pass for the horses as they come up. Watch him just drop the head of the bat down and in. Boom. Very quick to the ball. When Bonifacio first got over to Florida, he absolutely went crazy in the month of April. He was hitting 400 for a long time. Here's Dan Ugla. Ugla looked like that pitch was up a little bit, and Ugla fouled it back. He was swinging from his heels. Well, he will do that. He can. Lots and lots of power. He's got opposite field pop. And he goes the opposite way. Donwell will be doing the game tomorrow, but it's into the seats. So Kane jumps out in front. Oh, and two. Ugla. Hit by a pitch in the first, and then hit a fly ball to deep left. That was tracked down by Andres Torres. This is going to go to the backstop, and coming in to score a free run is Coglin. Well, Pinch is going to be mad about that. We always talk about. How good a ball blocker he is with running third. This is one where he tries to shortstop the ball. Watch him try and reach out backhand. And when you do that, you're asking for trouble because when the ball makes contact with your glove, it does this. It spits away. If you turn that glove around and uh, do it in the conventional way, let that chest protector become your glove and use that glove basically to block the hole between your legs. That's the proper technique to block that ball. Douglas stays alive by reaching out and fouling that pitch back. So the air by Renteria and then the double in the wild pitch gives the Marlins their first run of the ball game and they have Bonifacio now at third with nobody out.
high, two and two. Again, attacking that high fastball, it stays two and two. Marlins are six and eight against the National League West. They're a game under 500 at 18 and 19 on the road. And it was the last homestand where they won five of six. Two two pitch coming up to Uglo. Three and two. Giants will trade a ground ball out for a run. <laughs> One thing Kane doesn't want to do is just give Ugla a free pass. This will probably be a challenge. Here it is on the ground to third, and Sandoval is going to throw him out. He chased Bonifacio back. Now think back about three weeks ago when there was a play that he didn't come home on. He said that will never happen again. And right here he had to make sure that Bonifacio committed himself back to the bag of third. He could not have played this any more perfectly. Once Bonifacio who has great speed commits back to the third sack. He goes ahead and shoots down ugly. That was a nice play. Here's Cantu. Again the Giants will play back. Only because that ball was struck so sharply kept Bonifacio from breaking. Well, that's one of those instinct plays though that you know a guy playing third base for a long time would know how to make it because he's made the play somewhere down the line. Fouled at the plate it's a ball and a strike. And when you're asking a guy like Pablo Sandoval who's been a, a catcher for the majority of his professional career and you know, he did play some first and some third down the minor leagues but not a lot. When you're asking him to make those type of plays, I mean, those are the type of plays that expose a guy. But he has been so good at making the adjustments to those type of plays since he's gone over there. Line drive, that'll be a base hit for Cantu. And coming in to score is Bonifacio. It's now 5 to 2. Well, the reason I've always liked Jorge Cantu as a hitter is because of his ability to go to right field. Outstanding hitter. Here comes Dave Rigetti. Marlins have just let the Giants know that they're not going to lay down. Well, they have too much firepower of their offense. You know, they're up there high in the standings in the National League East. They've been playing good baseball coming into this series. The Marlins had gone six and four in their last ten games, and they were a game out of first place behind Philadelphia. And they've won five out of their last six. So they had a head of steam coming into this series. Now, granted, they don't have Hanley Ramirez in the lineup tonight. That hurts them, but it's not going to slow them down too much. Here's Hermida. One ball and no strikes. Hermida is bounced out to first and he's flied out to center field. It's 5 2 Giants. Hit into left center field and hit well. Rowan out in that alleyway will make the catch. Not in this yard, folks. Two outs. Well, it is the sixth inning, and now it's time for the Cruise Light Freeze Cam, where we're going to bring in Cody Ross, who hits a double. Yeah, it is a double. This fan leans across the wall and takes what could have been a home run away. Ball was not contested. It was ruled a ground rule double. And that's your Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by Fruit Fr Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And that's out of play. And that fan was frosted. He was escorted out of the stadium. There is zero tolerance in this ballpark for fans that interfere with baseball. And unfortunately, Many fans learn that the hard way.
Ross has had two hits against Kane. Very high. One ball and one strike. And well, the one beautiful thing about this at bat is Matt Cain has some score leverage. He's got a three run lead here. And you're right about Cody Ross. He's had good swings against them all night long. He's hit the ball hard. But Cain could still challenge because he has a three run lead. One and two, like that. Like that. One ball and two strikes. On the ground, Sandoval will go the short way, a rebate. So two runs is the damage. Giants are coming up. Renteria will lead things off. In all these years I've known you, I think you only have four friends, Mike, me, and your two brothers. So we're all spoken for tomorrow, so Mike, it's up to you. you got to bring 38 of your best buds out here tomorrow night. Amy, you're not invited as far <laughs> as my group. I can come out here whenever I want. <laughs> That's right. You are the queen of the yard. Amy, you want to get in tomorrow night? Bring your mohawk. <laughs> Here's Renteria who... <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Renteria skies it into right center field. Well, you can tune in to the Bay Area's number one rated 11 p.m. newscast, NBC Bay Area tonight at 11 o'clock. And you can wake up with traffic and weather on NBC Bay Area weekday morning starting at 4.30 a.m. Sure Holtz on the first pitch. Cantu on the dive. Cantu underhands it a little low, but West grabs it and a nice play. Two outs. That was a nice play. Not a great feed to West. But Cantu on the backhand really takes one away from Sure Holtz. I think he was a little surprised when he looked up and saw that Sure Holtz was breathing down West's neck. I think you're right.
A rebate. Takes low. A rebate doubled in the fifth inning. Flip to right field, moving over is Hermida, and Hermida makes the catch. And uh, saw a little white there, but it looked like Hermida held on. Let's see if he did. That's a trap. I think he trapped it. Got 10 batters versus the Astros, and that means fans get $10 off tickets to this Thursday's July 9th game when the Giants take on the Padres. That is Linscombe's next start. So that means your regular $24 view reserve seats going for $14. You can reserve your seat right now. Log on sfgiants.com, and you can reserve the K Zone, receive the K Zone discount. You use the co coupon code Giants K, and you can get yourself a ticket online. Again, the, the code is Giants K. First pitch to John Baker is a ball. One ball and no strikes. It'll be Baker, Helms, and then likely a pinch hitter. 5 2 Giants here in the seventh inning. Jeremy Affel is throwing down in the Giants' bullpen. We're, Mike is absolutely sure. I'm still kind of on the fence leaning towards a trap. Well, I think the ball bounced on the grass. Ishikawa goes to the bag. One out. The ball hits the glove and it actually hits the ground on the bounce right there. That is a trap. But you cannot fault an umpire for calling that the way he you did. Can't. I mean, not. If I'm on the fence, how the heck does he know? Yeah, I mean, you just get, you can't. You, know, you can't get on Charlie Relaford for that call. But I think he did trap it. Here's Wes Helms. Helms takes low and away. This is normal speed. This is what Relaford sees. He's out there looking right at it. And that angle right there, you cannot blame an umpire. Two and no to Helms. And we played it up here about eight times. And it looked like it hits the glove, bounces right there, and then comes up back into the glove. And it all happened so quickly. Charlie Relaford said a catch, and of course that will stand. But I don't think he got it. Right now, Kane is 3 0 to Helms with a pinch hitter on deck, and that's Alejandro Diaz. And a little help makes it 3 1. I think he should hunt for strikes on a 3 0 count. Brendan Donnelly, newly acquired Brendan Donnelly. Starting to get loose now for the fish. 
Line drive. Rowan back. I think you think they should hunt for strikes all the time. I do. I think it's a better game when you make him swing the bat. Here's Piazza. Well, I don't disagree with it at all. I agree. I mean, that's one of the things that Matt Cain has done so well this year to help himself out. He's been so well in the first pitch ratio. 62% of the time, he strike one. Boom. And the command that he's had to be able to go inside, outside, and elevate, and he's done it so consistently throughout the year. Throw a new changeup on there that he's very confident in. You've got yourself a very confident young arm. An all star. He'll forever be introduced now that way. Former all star pitcher Matt Kane. It's his 60th birthday. It's how I introduce you to my friends. <laughs> yeah. Wherever I go. I call you on the phone. Hey, is this all star crew? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm a bitching guy, too. Yeah. Out of play, it's two and two. Yeah, Jeff asked me a great question. Cool to be a 20 game winner or an all star, and you can't say both. 20 game winner. I also introduce you that way, too. Former 20 game winner and all star. And it's three and two. Good pitch. Well, I mean, if you're lucky, you, you do get a, a, a label that's a positive label. I mean, you don't want to be a 20 game loser. I doubt if anybody would introduce you that way, but it would definitely follow you around. Felt ready to go as Bruce Bochy's seen enough. Kevin Franson's coming in. We're going to have a double switch. So here's Affeld coming out. And listen to the hand from Matt King. Jeremy Affel will face the left handed hitting Chris Coglin with two outs and a runner at first. Well, if you look at the credentials from Jeremy Affel's first half, you would say that he would definitely be a guy you would consider to pitch in the Midsummer Classic in St. Louis as well. Those are all star numbers. 36th time he's taken the ball. Kevin Franzen comes in on the double switch. He'll hit the ninth spot and play second base. And there's that big breaking ball that just says hello. That says says I'm an all-star. What that says. That's a rough first pitch for any left-handed hitter. I'm sorry. Hello. 
If well, you're Chris Coggy, you're thinking, please don't throw that one again. Well, if you're thinking he is going to throw it every pitch. Tough play for Renteria. Got him. And that ends the inning. Well, maybe tough play for somebody else. 5 2 Giants. Com. Grab your bag. It's on. By Chevron with Tecron. No other gasoline has more cleaning power. And by Comcast HD. With more HD than any one period. All right, let's check out our McDonald's game summary. A lot of it's about Matt Cain. The Giants are leading 5-2. to two. Bonifacio's had a couple of hits. West gave up the grand slam. And he gave it up to Pablo Sandoval. Cain went six and two-thirds. One earned run, a couple of walks, five strikeouts, five two Giants, and that's your McDonald's game summary. Here's Brendan Donnelly. Yep, that Brendan Donnelly. Remember him as a California Angel or a Anaheim Angel. He was a big part of that World Championship team that beat the Giants in 2002. He had a great story, and he was really. Had another great story. Donnelly was a guy who pitched a long time in the minor leagues and got an opportunity with the Angels and really cashed in and did really well for him. And then he had some arm problems and now he's basically resurfaced. Well, the year the Giants saw him in the World Series, he was pretty close to one of those lights out guys. He was. And you're thinking, how could this guy be in the minor leagues for as long as he was with that type of stuff? Ishikawa flips one to left for a leadoff single. Well, decision time now for Bruce Bochy as to how he wants to play this. If he wants to give up an out now and have friends and bunt, even with a three run lead. Check out Donnelly's reaction. Stink guy. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Something like swing the bat. Kevin Franson. Welcome back. Having a good season down at Fresno. Doing what he had to do. Line drive to left field. And making the running catch is Coglin. And I know what Kevin Franson is thinking. How do you get a hit around here? What do I have to do? He's now two for 29 and he's hit many balls hard. He's hit about probably 15 of those balls in his 29 at bats just like this and he has got nothing to show for it. Great at bat, good extension through the ball, it hits a seed to left field. And a nice play from Chris Coglin. Plus he hits him to the fast guy. He 
Here's Rowan. Rowan fouls this one into the club level. When I see run into that hit line, I always look for sympathy. And if you go to a starting pitcher, they'll give you some. Oh yeah, that's our job. One day out of every five you pitch, the other four you give sympathy to the guys that hit the ball hard and get outs. <laughs> you know what? I appreciated it too, Otter. To left field. Hermida will make the running catch. Two outs. Well, right now, Donnelly's not fooling anybody. A base hit from Ishikawa, a rocket off the bat of Franzen, an opposite field, opposite, opposite field seed off the bat of of Aaron Rowan. You know, who gives better sympathy. Who's that? Trainers. Oh yeah, trainers are like mothers. Here's Torres. What Donnelly will throw everything at you. Love. Arms, the leg kick. South Giants assistant trainer Mark Grusbeck down there. He was definitely moving in for some sympathy. There's Mark Grusbeck. And Skim's got the vote for Pablo. He's got the vote for Pablo patch on. One ball and one strike. Giants players came out today for batting practice. They were stretching out. And they had the vote for Pablo patches all over. Jonathan Sanchez had four Pablo patches holding up a big sign that was taped onto his back of his uni. And of course the big sign said vote for Pablo. One and two. Randy Wynn with a night off. There's Sergio Romo with the patches. That's the sign that Mike was talking about. One and two. Ishikawa goes and that's pulled foul. There's Pablo Sandoval. And the girls in the background holding up their sides. Yeah, see Pablo, we're trying to help you out. Pablo, we dig it. Especially that little one. She's doing whatever the sister does. And maybe even a little better. Ishikawa goes, and Ishikawa is going to steal it. Well, that surprises me that the Marlins did not defend that stolen base very well. John Baker, for whatever reason, but this is definitely a ball you want to throw off of. They hold them on. I don't think Baker ever saw him go. I mean, there's no other way to describe as to why he did not offer a throw down to second base. So the Giants get a gift. Well, it's 90 feet now in scoring position. Andres Torres, two and two. And it doesn't matter. Torres strikes out swinging to end the inning. 5 2 Giants.
courtesy of Comcast Sports Net. So for tickets, you go to sfgiants.com or you can call 1-877-4SFG-TIX. It is very cool. It's got the faux hawk. It's got the tats. It's got the look. It is the Brian Wilson bobblehead. Sunday, July 12th, 105. Here's Bonifacio. FL starts him out a bit wide. One ball and no strikes. 5-2 Giants. This is the... The inning where Affel will go after Bonifacio, Ugla, and Cantu. Nobody else is in the bullpen, and it's two balls and no strikes. Both Ishikawa and Sandoval came roaring in from third and first. Two balls and no strikes. Hey, I don't care how they do it. You just want them to brush their teeth. That's it. There's a strike. Two and one. Yeah. Oh, no, you got to make the noise. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Took me until I was 32 years old to do it. But you do it well. Up the middle and in the center field. Bonifacio has been a difficult out for the Giants as he leads the eighth inning off with a base hit. His third hit of the night. And Sergio Romo very quickly gets up and starts getting greased. Got the call to go oil up his soup bone. That's right. Ugla 0 for 2. In the sixth, he bounced out to third. On Balden, no strikes. Ugla definitely has the firepower to make this a close game. Dangerous hitter. Out of play. One ball and one strike. Not many of these Marlins hitters have had a lot of history against Affeld. As an example, Ugla has only faced Affeld once. He's actually faced him twice. He's picked up a base hit and he's walked. Below the zone, two balls and one strike. Giants with a five to two lead against a very tough Marlins offense with their big hitters coming up. Up to middle, Renteria to Franson. Toyoshikawa. Double play. A very nice 6 4 3 double play. And it's just a matter of Renteria being able to get to it. You see the underhand flip. And Franson with a very nice job of just making sure he gets a nice strong throw off. And that collision is always going to be late just because Renteria got to it in a hurry. And here's Cantu. That ball did not stay in Franz's glove very long. Of course, I guess you you have big motivation with a guy breathing down your neck, yeah, huh? Exactly. And Bonifacio's got pretty good amount of speed. Cantu with an RBI single in the sixth. He's had seven at bats against Affel. And he has the most at bats of anybody on this roster. He's three for seven. Well, it's a lot easier to pitch to Cantu with a three run lead and two outs as opposed to two men on it and nobody out. You know, and that really is the beauty of Affeld. I mean, there are not many lefties that can get you the strikeout and can get you the ground ball. We've seen him use that ground ball to get out of jams all year long. Foul. He kicks up 
Nice pick. Went to our security guard, and he had a little guy picked out. Yep, our ushers are definitely heroes, folks. That's Ike. Ike's been here a long time. Oh, yeah. And he was a player. Vote for Ike. 2 2 pitch. He got him. Half foul with a double play ball and a strikeout. What's new? But tonight has been the night for Pablo Sandoval. A grand slam. Vote for Pablo. Well, check out tonight's Chronicle Live, presented by Autotrader.com tonight at 11, right here in Comcast Sportsnet. Bay area. Jim Cozumore is going to be the host. Raiders great Marv Hubbard. I really like that guy. Brandy Chastain and radio personality Marty Lurie. Slusher, Mark Purdy, all the folks that you will see on Chronicle Live at 11. Sandoval pops this one back and out of play. This is Tim Wood. Tim Wood replaces Brendan Donnelly, who replaced Sean West, and the old one coming up to Sandoval. Line drive foul right by the Giants' tarp, and it's nothing in two. Tim Wood, a rookie out of Tucson, Arizona, 26 years old. Just the fourth game that Woods been in. Had a fastball, low 90s, with a good sinker. Change up curveball combination. Excellent change up. Certain change. Sandoval out swinging. One out. Here are the numbers for Tim Wood. He could definitely throw you a ground ball as well. Got a good sink on that fastball. By the way, did you send your thank you card to Billy Bean? Not yet. For acquiring Scott Hairston? Get him out of the National League before, before the Padres got here. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing this morning. I like that Billy Bean. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's definitely helping Giants out against the Padres. Hairston, the Padre, or the Giants killer. No longer a Padre. Top foul, and also not acquiring Hairston. Before the Giants played the A's. He was, he was thinking. He is thinking. Brian Wilson, the Giants closer, gets stretched out. He will pitch the ninth. Job well done for Jeremy Athel. What's new? And 
a base hit for Molina. There was a certain area for Molina, maybe that area right there where he just does not miss it. He's not going to hit it out. He might, but he's just going to square it up. Well, they set up inside, and Wood misses the, the intended target. He leaves it out there out over the plate. And if Molina can get extended, he's going to hurt you. Good middle away hitter, good low ball hitter. Renteria 0 for 2. Down low to Renteria with Nate Sherholtz on deck. Out into right center field, hit pretty well, but lots of territory out there for Cody Ross. Two outs. And here's Sherholtz. Tomorrow we'll be out in the loft. We're going to dress warm. We will definitely have some warm clothes on. The loft. And I'm saying we're going to get five foul balls there tomorrow. I hope so. Yep, these guys still looking for their first one, but it, it may be coming. Strike at Denise to Sherholtz. Sherholtz likes that first pitch, however, did not offer it that one. Oh, and two. Tim Woods got good stuff. First chance to see him. Sherrill's out swinging, and that'll end the inning. So we will go to the ninth. You're at AT&T Park. Brian Wilson will come out by two Giants. Very good night for Pablo Sandoval and for Matt Kane. And right now they have a three run lead as Wilson is throwing to Jeremy Hermida. 
And the first pitch is down low. One ball and no strikes. It was Affel who had to go through the two, three, and four hitters. And now Wilson throws the strike to even the count. Barry Zito tomorrow night. The numbers for Brian Wilson, 37th game that he has been in. 3-4-1 ERA. 21 saves that has him ranked amongst the leaders in the National League. And I think if he would have gotten the call that would allow him to get on a plane Sunday and head to St. Louis, he would not have been surprised, nor would we. Got a good solid first half being the Giants closer. Breaks his bat on the ground to Franson. And this will be a 4 3 put out. A lot of closers that are having terrific seasons. And if you're going to choose one guy off of a team, a lot of times that makes it difficult for someone else to get on. I don't know. I, th I think the, the, there's a great argument. Do you take at least one person from every team? I don't think they should. I, I, I've never agreed with that. Here's Cody Ross. I mean, you take the guys that are deserving to go. You take your all stars. The very fact that some guy who's having a great year does not get to go because some other team had to have a representative to me doesn't doesn't make sense. In tight two balls and no strikes. But on the other hand, you can see why the rule is there. I mean, you may have a struggling franchise. Where you got one player, it creates interest for that city to watch the All Star game. Uh, and it totally makes sense. I, I I agree with the point. It's it's a good one. Two balls and one strike. But I still think when somebody who's deserving gets left off the list, it means too much to the player. Swing and a miss by Ross. Two and two. 99 mile an hour challenge country hard fastball. And you got a guy throwing it hard and you got a guy swinging it hard and he just threw it right by Cody Ross and that is not easy to do. Good fastball hitter. Flips it down the right field line and that's going to be trouble. Sure holds. We'll track it down and it's a double for Ross. His third hit. And for the Marlins, their seventh hit. Bonifacio has three. Ross has three. Cantu has the other hit. Here's John Baker. Baker flips win over by Renteria and over his head. And it'll be a bloop for Baker. And now things become interesting. And many times with Brian Wilson, it is interesting. Well, Brian Wilson has faced Wes Helms twice. He has struck him out twice. The thing about Helms, however, is he has power. Ross Glode has come out on the on deck circle for the Marlins. One ball and no strikes. Two balls and no strikes. Ross is at third. Baker is at first. And Wilson now has to come in and Helms knows it.
Helms looked like he was taking all the way, and if he was, I don't know why. It's two and one. Well, especially in a situation when a guy with power has got a 2 0 count, you can look for one pitch. And, and he did indeed get the fastball, albeit it was a 100 mile an hour fastball. Out of play down the right field line. It's two and two. And you're seeing the best that Wilson has to offer right now. I mean, this is you're, he's topping out. This is the best fastball that he can give you. He is competing. Two and two to Helms. Helms just got a piece of it. Good location. 2 2. The count leverage really swings in favor of the pitcher because he can go out to a corner. And this is a nice breaking ball right off the plate. And in that two strike count, Helms extending to fight off a pitch to stay alive. So good job by both gentlemen. Three and two. Three balls and two strikes. And a base hit up the middle. Coming in to score is Ross. It's five to three. And that'll bring up Ross Glode and Dave Rigetti's coming out. Well, the message from Rigetti is going to be location. Over velocity. Don't try and overthrow your pitches. Think about what you're trying to do here. And pitch for that ground ball right in the count. He's got a two seam fastball to go along with that four seamer. Sometimes as a closer, you'll look up and you'll see a high number on the board and you try and add to it. You try to keep putting 99s and 100s on the on the on the scoreboard. And I think the speech is going to center around location. Wilson more than capable about about being able to get that ground ball in this scenario. A ground ball that would get him a double play and out of this game. And now you protect Triples Alley. Hello, as you can see, a left-handed hitter. Swing and a miss. No balls and one strike. Good hard slider. And another strike. Nothing in two. Low thought that was low. Uh, it's an invitation. Definitely a pitcher strike. But the invitation is simple. You can throw that pitch right down in the dirt. And Glow's got to get after it. He's got to protect. Well, now that that pitch has been called a strike, you're right. One and two. Now all three pitches have gone down at the knees or below. You could change sight lines right now with a fastball above the hands inside corner. And that would be a great pitch. That's out of play. Baker is at second. Helms is at first. If you're going to go inside with that fastball, though, you've got to think above the hands. You do not want to drop it down there, mid thigh below.
I do not know how Glow took that one after the second strike was called. Pretty much the same location, height wise, just a little bit outside from where the second strike was. But if you're Bruce Bochy, you're thinking, hey, if one's a strike, the other one's got to be a strike. I do not think that last one was a strike. Three and two. Again, they try to backdoor breaking ball and miss wide. Three balls and two strikes. Ball back. Twenty four pitches now. Top foul. His blood stays alive. Romo is in the Giants bullpen. To this hitter. This will be the ninth pitch coming up. Saw a slight look from Wilson over to the dugout to see if Bochi was coming out. And Bochi said, "No, you're our closer. Go save the game." What that does is it puts the tying run in scoring position for Coglin. One ball and no strikes. Two balls and no strikes. All right, quick, we got to change chairs. Come on, this ain't working. Now Benjamin Molina is going to go out and have a word. This is where you got to take a deep breath. The happy crowd going into the ninth is now an anxious crowd. Well, one run in, one out. Bases loaded in a 2 0 count. You can see why they're anxious. And I guarantee you, the Giants clubhouse, Matt Keane, is feeling the same way. Two and one. Up the middle, Wilson. Renteria has it. The throw to first, and safe at first is Coglin, who went down on all fours, and Renteria with a really nice play. Looked like Wilson threw him a changeup, and a lot of nice plays involved here. Comebacker, he could have gone home, and they could have got the double at first. He opts to second. And here's the nice play full bore into the runner and you talk about another fine effort talk about Ishikawa's dig out of the dirt. This ball gets by Ishikawa that's a tie ball game. So really a mistake in the base that Wilson decided to throw to and go into second. And here's Bonifacio who's got three hits tonight. One 
ball and no strikes. Bonifacio with a bunt base hit in the third a double in the sixth and a single in the eighth. At the knees one ball and one strike. Got to watch that runner at first. Outside Sandoval is playing very shallow at third. He's going to take the bunt away from Bonifacio. Helms is the base runner at third. Coglin is the base runner at first. And it's three and one. He's ready. Next pitch for Wilson, thirty five. Three and two. And it doesn't look like he's losing a thing on the fastball. That was a good one. All standing. Three and two. Out of play. Again, a reach back 100 mile an hour fastball. And Bonifacio fights it off. Three and two. Wilson. Ball game. Wilson with his 22nd save, Matt Cain with his 10th win. And although it got a little scary, okay, it got a lot scary. <laughs> the Giants end up winning by a final.